Um, that is pretty much everything that we've gathered so far. There was a letter that was sent to us from um, the school community council chair at UNTA that we wanted you to have a copy of. Are we going to discuss this at all? What would you? Well, I could, I'm not. No, let's break it down. Um, what I, oh, so I, I want you to know that, that this has been the main focus of um, everybody here at the office. They've been working on making sure that, you know, we gathered up all the questions that we um, followed through, you know, or sorry, not followed through, that they looked at sorting them, sorting them making sure that um, all the answer, all the questions that we could answer that we did tonight, that's been their focus. And so, any, you know, just, just be aware, aware of that and that the level of questions, you know, don't think that there's going to be a lot of deeper things that, you know, we're going to be able to go into today. And especially around personnel. Can we already we have so, questions about these? So. Sure. So, Rosemary, did you have some? Well, I just wanted to say, I, you know, it's interesting that we mentioned site-based decision making, you know, many points here, which I think personally is talked about for the district. But um, most of the issues that we have had have nothing to do with site-based, in my opinion. It has to do with an overall procurement program that we bought that was supposed to notify parents. And um, the site-based side of it, I mean, as far as I can read, if the only thing that the site had anything to do with was to set a cap of how much money the students could be in the rears. So, I mean, I, I think that, you know, when we put in something like that, it's, try, it, it, it's back to not taking responsibility as a, as a district and as a board. And I think that is, I'm, 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 to me, a glaring flaw in some of these answers. And I, you know, and I apologize, but I think the bottom line is we as a district need to take this responsibility. And and to say it's site-based, to me, it's just, it's inappropriate. Can, can I respond to yes. that? Rosemary, what, what, what a, my intention was, or our intention was, in responding that way and describing the fact that each school had its own credit limit right. was to, in fact, say that we don't think that was the right way to handle it because the credit limits ranged from zero to 20 some odd dollars from school to school. So now we have a situation where that's no longer, that kind of difference among schools is no longer in play. So we're taking we, that away from the site, which is fine. I mean, I don't know if it matters that much. But the bottom line is that our program, <coughs> it didn't function well. Or, you know, the principals weren't aware, or whatever word you want. Somebody else besides the, um, then Shirley was, was be more responsible for this issue. And it wasn't yes. to me. I'm just saying, I just think that's kind of pushing it back to the school that had no, it really had little control over the program that we were using. And I, you know, it's, it's your call. I mean, you've written this, but I, you know, I personally would have not put in all this site-based stuff because the only thing that's site-based in what I could gather is the idea that how much is the cap? That's the only thing that we had that site based. Otherwise, it's a program that, the, that tells the parents, and the program is set up to tell the parents. Well, there are two things that are site based. One was the credit limit, and the other was the um, instruction that the kitchen manager and the principal were to try to figure out the best way to notify parents. Because not all parents use the online system. It's not, right. it's not 100% of parents who use that, regardless of whether it was effective or ineffective or whether the instructions were good or not. I, I, I have gathered that almost all the complaints were by parents who used the system. Yes. I did not hear anybody who's paying in cash or at the office or wherever they pay are having this problem. It was all system based. So, I mean, I, I listen, it's out there now. So I'm, But I'm just saying to me, it, it isn't a site based problem. It was well, a district, me, it I, is a district issue. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate you saying that, Rosemary, because the intention certainly was not to push back out to the school. It was to give information. Okay, I hear what you're you saying. Know, context. And context, that was okay. it. Because okay. absolutely, the district has taken responsibility, you know, of, of this situation, of what happened at UNTA. You know, looking at um, the My Payments Plus 
and has it worked in school, all of that will be done you know, through Squire. And so I think that right now what we wanted to do is just say, this is how decisions, you know, were made, and it certainly was not to push it back out and say, you know, Okay. Well, that that was not the intention. So I appreciate you saying that, but it was not the intention. Michael? So I have uh, four questions. Who on the board uh, participated in creating these answers? Nobody. Nobody on the board? She just says she did. No, no. I said the reason that I think, well, may, maybe I did, Michael. I didn't write any of the answers to these questions, and nor did Christy. No. Um, I think who, who the reason that they were, I was trying to explain to Rosemary why I think some of these questions were written the way they were. All right, so we advertised this meeting that the board was going to answer the community questions, but the board really, nobody on the board had any participation in creating these answers? Is that All of these questions came from the parents, and the answers came from the internal investigation and also from information from Child Nutrition, from UNTA. It was a gathering of information that was done through the internal investigation. So we had nothing to do with the answers. This is all from the gathered information that they have so far. Who? So from it's the superintendent? No. Or, the human resources director. Human resources director. Okay. The, and the superintendent and business administrator did not answer these questions. Okay, so this is from the HR director. Okay. okay. And then the other question I have is throughout this document, again, this is the first time I've seen it, it, there's pepper throughout here, which I think is a bit disingenuous. It says, it is the district's understanding that the district's trial nutrition field supervisor. I think we need to go back and define that. Who is the district? I mean, that's not a person. And, and I understand when we say district policy, but when we're personifying the word district, um, who is that child nutrition? Is that superintendent? Is that the business administrator? I think we need to define throughout this document who that is, or, or what, the, at least at the very least, what department it is, and as opposed to just using this, you know, I see it under 9D. The district admits that the information did not clearly indicate that parents need to actively see. So who is, who's admitting that? Well, and I think that that could easily be, I mean, I'm looking at number four. When you say is the district's understanding, it would probably be, you know, HR. Right. Human resources understanding. Right. So, so I didn't know that. So, but I mean, Well, I don't like, either. This is the first time I've seen this, mm -hmm. too. Okay. You know, well, I'm, I'm just. I'm, go ahead. I'm just, no, that's it. I was just asking that maybe we, we give a little more definition into and that. that instead of done. Absolutely. Being so broad. And then uh, just a couple more is when we say here on number 10 about like Rosemary was bringing up this issue of site-based uh, decision-making. When I see site-based decision-making, I'm thinking of the SEC. So when we go down to number 11 and we're saying that site-based decision created this up $5 limit, are we going are are we gonna to be able to go back into the SEC minutes of the school and find where the SEC made that limit, or is that something that it's really not site-based and the principal did it? Well, actually, if you look at the written agreement, if Rosemary can correct me, there are three site-based decision-makers. There is the SIC, which is a site-based decision-maker. There is the principal, which is a site-based decision-maker. And then there is the SCC, which are site-based decision-makers. When they don't agree, we end up with what we call parity, but there is not a single site-based decision-maker under the district site-based decision-making policy. They have various responsibilities and roles, but they are all considered decision-makers, all three of those. Thank you. And, and that's what I wanted to define then, you know, when okay. you say using site-based decision-making, who are we talking about out of, you know, if we use that definition, which I'm okay with, let's, you know, who, who exactly, what group are we talking okay. about? And then one last question, again, I just see this, this email or that you passed out, that I'm hoping that my letter is going to get passed out because I'm going to get a little bit concerned that an SEC chair can get a letter passed out that a board member can at, at their own meeting. Yes. But but you have here, you know, again, it says that the SEC has only been contacted by one UNTA parent. And I'll tell you right now, just scanning this, this looks really staged and, and, it's, yes. and it's probably, you know, going to upset people, you know, when you read it because it, it, it I mean, this isn't my area, but I've heard from a number of parents over there that if this SEC chair is saying this, then she's really out of touch with her own community. Yes. yes. So well, thank you for your comments. I appreciate that. Um, anybody else? Any questions or comments? Well, the only other one I have is when we talk about this procurement on our timeline on March 2013, I would assume the process was done through child nutrition because I don't remember talking about it. 
to find this, um, this um, software. So I'm assuming it was not done at the board level. The Even though the RFP says it was. It was done at the... But I mean, it was the vendor was looked at at the nutrition level, I assume. That is correct. Okay. I mean, it, yeah, we approved it because we assumed they did their job. In the when did we approve it? Probably in March of 2013. Yeah. Well, oh, I looked at all the minutes. I couldn't find it. I don't know. We can go back and we can fight that. Oh, Janet, you just said that we did approve it, right? Yes. Do you know what? You don't know what means? I do not know okay. the exact means. I've looked and couldn't find it. It That's, is there. Well, where? You, you can't okay. tell um, me what Okay. No, my right. I did not know that I was going to be asked that question. Had you, you asked me that before, I'm sure I've given you that information in the past, Mr. Clara, and I would be more than happy to get that for you. Okay. Well, there's no need to get snippy. I'm uh, not being snippy. Okay. So I wrote, you are, I, I wrote you a letter earlier today and I sent it to you and that was one of the questions in my letter that I did not find that in there. And that's why I was questioning the RFP process. So I'm just concerned that you are the business administrator and you're saying that we did approve it, but you can't point to the date. That's what concerns me. Yeah, Mr. Clara, I was up at the legislature today because the legislative session ends tomorrow mm -hmm. and I'd be more than happy to get that information for you. Okay. Thank you. That Okay. I'm sorry, I thought Doug had a question. I'm sorry. All right. Anybody else? All right. Um, like I said, we will go ahead and get the other document as quickly as. Oh, Laurel, I'm sorry. Laurel, go ahead. Heather and I were at that SEC meeting. Can you put your. Um, Heather and I were at that SEC meeting, and I need to commend Carrie. She handled it very well, and I agree with everything that you wrote in your letter. So this, this letter was written. Oh. Yes, thank you. All right, this was at the request of the group of parents, the SCC that was there. Okay. Anything else? It must have been closed. All right. right. So I will um, make sure that, like I said, that we will provide all of the questions as soon as we can get that gathered up. And if there is anything further, then we can go ahead and have we can adjourn. Where's my letter at that I asked to be part of this meeting? Okay, so the letter that you asked to have provided, you said was a letter of support, but it actually was asking the board to include it in the RFP to Squire. So we said we put it on discussion in our next agenda so that the board has an opportunity to see all the information that you included, and then we can discuss, let the board discuss, decide, you know, they're going to expand that um, Request to Squire. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Where's the parent request As that employees not be terminated until after the investigation to come we adjourn. Okay, thank yeah, you. I would second that. Hold on, I would not move that we adjourn. If parents are asking questions, I thought we had till 5.30 to answer their questions. How on earth are you guys going to adjourn a meeting so when Michael, they're asking questions? When, when a question is asked about... Um, a personnel issue, or we can't answer that here. Well, then why don't you tell them that instead of well, trying to short circuit and I, you didn't adjourn me, the meeting? Excuse me. You didn't give me an opportunity, so thank you. Well, I was I just objecting adjourn. to adjourning. Thank you. So, um, from what I heard, I don't know who asked the question. I did. And what was the question? That we communicated with our school board member, Laurel Young, asking her to. Uh, bring a motion forward that no child nutrition employee would be terminated until the external investigations were completed. Okay. Well, that's something that we can't do here. You know, in a study session, there's no motions. There's no business that can be done at this point. And, you know, with that being a, um, a personnel issue, we wouldn't be able to address that right now. But I think that, okay, so I, just, I think I, what I could say is that at this point right now, um, an investigation has not been held on the HR part, so I would assume that all employees would be in place until after those investigations are completed. We want that assurance. Well, I'm, I'm telling you that the investigation hasn't even started yet, right. and we have no idea how long that scope of that's going to be. Can I have some things noted for the minutes? I'm assuming that we're taking minutes. You know, this isn't a meeting. Yeah. So I have a motion on the floor. 
right now. Well, wait, what so you just one thing? second. This, wow. isn't, this isn't a meeting that was scheduled to have interaction. It's like any of our other it's board meetings. It's a study meetings. session. I it is you a haven't. study session. What would you like to have happen? Well, no, I no, let's have the board. I've seen in, in study sessions, you have asked people in the mm -hmm. audience questions, and I thought this Which is usually staff in regards to questions about whatever's been presented. Right. And this is, so this was a meeting designed to answer the parents' <laughs> questions, and I thought we were going to go for an hour. I would, I would just recommend that we honor the, what we said we were going to do is answer their questions. Well, so, just from a legal standpoint, a couple things. You do have a motion, at, which is a priority motion, that's supposed to exclude all of the things on the table that has been seconded. Wow. It needs to be voted up or down. And if the board wants to have further discussion, then the board can vote it down. Second, sec vote. Secondly, there is, a, there is a difference between a public meeting and a public hearing. This was not noticed as a public hearing where the public has a right to speak. This was noticed as a public meeting yes, sir, where the board public. provides the information board. to the public. You so, are not part of the school board. You may not speak. That's <laughs> <laughs> John. <laughs> that <is a> <laughs> uh, anyhow, th th those were the two points I wanted to make. You do have a motion pending. Thank you. So there is a motion on the floor. We can continue discussion. Are you asking for a vote? No, I'm saying, is there any more discussion to the motion, which is to adjourn? We have a second. Any other discussion? I would just like to say that you have presented the information that we have. We don't. We could. We could talk about what's being investigated, but we wouldn't get any further than we are. I think you've been very concise, HR, not you, um, with this information, and we go on and on and on. But we have a community that would like to move forward on benefit of the students and the faculty. No, no, no. And no. We have a there are, there's a minority of okay, local so parents. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop you for a second. So one of the things that um, has been that I've appreciated with this board is that you know, um, there is a civility that needs to be in our meetings. And to shout things from the audience. To, and we've, we've gone ahead and we've allowed that to happen. And I would just caution, you know, that we need to be able to hear what the board members, board members have to say. And if they want to take questions from the audience, then we will do that. But if you will just allow me to get through this, I would appreciate it. Thank you. So the motion on the floor right now is to adjourn. Yes, Michael. So I just wanted to respond to what uh, Robson, Mr. Robson said. And I agree You know that this is not a, a public hearing. But, but it is a study session, and I, in the year that I've been on the board, I have seen study sessions where, you know, my understanding they were informal. I mean, I, I, I haven't looked it up in, in our policy, but my understanding they were informal and they were designed, and we have, by practice, interacted with people that were sitting in those chairs. And so I'm just advocating for, and, and I just think it's inappropriate because I've been the victim of this myself, that we're having a discussion, and then Laurel and, and, Nell, and Doug will call for uh, adjournment or, or call for the question. And I just think that's inappropriate to do that, and, and that we owe people an explanation, and, and we have time, uh, you know, we set for an hour, that we should answer their questions. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to explain the reason I had seconded Laurel's motion is that I thought it was an excellent idea with the number and breadth of questions that had been submitted by uh, very good questions that had been submitted by a school community that we as a school board take an extraordinary step of calling an extra meeting so we could have time to answer all those questions and present the information that we had that we felt pretty comfortable with without speculating. So that's why we came here today, was to answer the very long and very good list of questions. I think that our president and vice president have done that really well. That is the reason why we convened this meeting 
So that is why I felt comfortable seconding the motion to end the meeting. Thank you. Well, I do think when we have a study session like this, I agree with Michael, it is informal. And I think if we could, even if we just say, let's take 15 minutes and allow for some questions from the audience. I mean, this we are their board. Yes. And, you know, if we're they, where are they supposed to interact with us? We let them speak for a couple minutes at the beginning of a business meeting, and we never really do interact unless we go to SEC. And I just think, here's an opportunity to interact, maybe get some trust back. I don't see any harm in spending 15 more minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's put a cap on it at 5.30, but let's, if they want to ask a question, we can say. We can't answer that because it's personnel. That's a very easy answer. So that's all I would say about this. I will withdraw my motion, if I will second that. But I think you need to have a specific context and, and, uh, and at 5.30, okay? I am happy to do that. Okay, so I would like to set some parameters. Thank you. Um, so the motion has been withdrawn. We will end at 5.30. Audience, if you would please recognize that there are going to be things that we're not going to be answered. It would be nice if we didn't have, you know, a um, certainly uh, any type of an argument. I think that, you know, we can try and answer what you, the questions that you might have. But as far as, you know, just Remembering that civility, please, all right? So, questions, 